Welcome, welcome, beautiful people of San Joaquin and Stanislaus counties. I know a couple of us are still connecting to audio, so we'll give it just a moment. Welcome to our second session together today for collaborative planning and implementation with San Joaquin and Stanislaus. It is wonderful to have you all here. If you are with me and you can hear me, if you could either turn on your video or put a nice emoji up for me so I know that you're connected. Excellent. Thank you. Beautiful. I love it when the when the video comes on and the beautiful faces. Good to see you all. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so recording is in progress. Want to let you all know you should have gotten a notification. Next slide. Want to really take the time to welcome you all. We know that you are incredibly busy and have so many things on your plate and working to ensure that the people in your counties have the best quality health care they can have. And so just really appreciate you for, for taking the time and to be with each other. Next slide. So today, um, want to give appreciation for California Department of Healthcare Services, Public Consulting Group, Health Begins, and the Gashtow Group. We are your presenters, facilitators, comrades, co-conspirers, and it's great to be with all of you. Next slide. Okay, these should look familiar. Last time we were together, we did that Jamboard activity. Um, where we thought about what is the community and the space that we want to create together. Um, so some of the agreements that we made with each other is that there's safety to ask questions, that we want clear and easy to understand information, that there's room for fun while learning new information. Go ahead and put on silly video filters. All of you is welcome here. That there's mutual understanding and to give one another the benefit of the doubt that there's willingness to share our experiences with the group. The more we share, the better we become. And there's gonna be an opportunity to do that a little bit later today in the agenda. Openness, let's not avoid conversations, even if they're tough conversations. We're gonna learn, not judge, create space to connect, support safe and honest about the differing interests of participants. We have mutual trust and collaborating so let's update our Zoom names. Okay, so if you can please make sure that your that your Zoom includes your name, organization that you are with. All right, I am now going to pass it off to the amazing Alexis Taylor from Health Begins. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, just to reaffirm what Ashlyn just stated, thank you all so incredibly much for joining us again today because we uplifted during those group norms um, that there is very there's a lot of difficulty with everyone finding the space and time to connect, even though we need to work together towards just achieving these uh, goals towards uh, Calate implementation challenges that we're experiencing. And so heading into the next slide, I just wanted to let everyone know what our objectives for today's session are going to be. Shabu, we can head to the next slide. Um, so for today's objectives, we are going to follow up on what we started building upon in that first session, which for us to, was for us to draft an AIM statement, and then based upon that AIM statement, for us to finalize a project charter together. These uh, documents are going to determine how we're going to spend the remainder of the year together, making sure that we're leading with what you are um, quite literally like setting as the foundation of this work together. Uh, number two, we'll define what those objectives are going to be. So by the end of this year, we will have accomplished X, Y, and Z. And number three, we're going to inform the measures that we're going to use to track our progress towards those goals. Um, we want to make sure that we're being very purposeful, very intentional about this work that we're accomplishing together. So making sure that we're measuring, engaging our success based upon the measures that you establish is going to be incredibly important. Moving into the next slide, in order for us to accomplish these, we've broken today's agenda down into three sections. Um, part one is going to be a session recap. We're going to spend just about 10 minutes uplifting um, what we covered during the first session, just to give everyone a refresher and to make sure that those that are new to today's session understand where we're picking up um, and where we left off during uh, the January orientation. 
part two, we're going to spend a lot of time together developing those shared goals. Um, what was uplifted for us during the last session is that we really want to, or that participants really want to use this time as more of a working meeting, a project meeting, more so than having a webinar type space. That was well received and just super appreciative for us to hear because we want to make sure that we're, you know, leading with action and not just um, facilitating. Part three, we'll cover some next steps, uplift what we're going to cover in the March session, um, and provide some immediate resources for the participants. And then before we dive into our actual actual session recap, I just want to redirect everyone to the um, supplemental deck that we provided via email. And you can let me know in the chat if you hadn't received that yet. But that's going to explain, um, you know, what CPI is who we as the facilitators are, what the registration process is, because everyone that's in attendance today should have registered uh, via the DHCS CPI website. And so just making sure that we're all on the same page by creating that supplement for you so you can know exactly what we're here to accomplish today and how we'll do it. Um, and I will gladly pass this over to our um, partner at the Gashow Group, uh, Teodros, to do a session recap and explain um, what we did during the last session. Okay, great. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, thank you, Ashlyn. Uh, great opening. I'm going to try and keep my time uh, brief because I know folks would rather much rather be in breakout rooms having discussion than getting more uh, getting more lecture uh, time thrown at them. So we'll briefly discuss um, what happened in, in the first session, but hopefully spend more time getting into um, what we've learned from you and, and also the working timeline. So uh, during that first session, we discussed the goals and background of the collaborative planning and implementation initiative. Uh, we covered uh, shared norms and agreements for participating in the group. Uh, we talked about what success will look like and the initial makings of an AIM statement and project charter. Uh, next slide. Uh, and so, you know, what we learned a lot from our discussions. We learned a lot from uh, our one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations and communications and uh, the breakout rooms that we had um, from the last session. And so from the first session, and I'm not, I'm not gonna highlight everything or name everything, but just the, you know, kind of a, uh, some of the, the main main points here. But uh, from the first session, uh, what came out was a lack of understanding or of challenges navigating the funding processes, also uh, improved utilization of HIEs uh, and, a quote was that Cal AIM is happening so fast that HIEs don't know how to meet the needs of participants, end quote. Um, another item was a uh, request for increased alignment between MCPs, specific, uh, specifically pertaining to streamline, uh, streamlining billing. Um, and then we had a, had a couple of other items, one of them being uh, that success includes having a managed care component. Um, now, during our one-on-one -on -one interactions, we also had some interesting points that came up uh, one of them being uh, calls for improved data sharing that would lead to improved access to services, specifically one encounter qualifying beneficiaries for multiple services. Um, also calls to automate MCP and DHCS processes, uh, such as those pertaining to reporting um, and also knowing specifically what services uh, or service plans are uh, still contracting for. Uh, from our gap analysis, uh, one item that came out was uh, fewer than half of registrants have received capacity building funding. So that was a big, uh, a big item that came up. Um, also a lack of workforce development for primary care and WIP providers and a lack of ECM, CS cohesive partner coordination across counties. Um, you know, feel free to kind of peruse the other items that are listed here. I'm not, again, I'm not going to name all of them, but there's a lot of good, uh, good reading here. And lastly, for managed care plans, uh, clear case management to know who is the primary uh, point of contact working with beneficiaries to determine what services they qualify for. Um, looking for a future where every child on uh, Medi-Cal is also enrolled in WIC and many children, uh, as we know, are not currently enrolled. Um, and to stop working in silos and noting that too many systems that uh, Exi that are existing are not talking to one another, not communicating um, across organizations or uh, or sectors. Any uh, any questions about that? Any points of observation? 
If not, next slide. So this is our uh, our timeline in terms of work planning, and I think we're pretty familiar with uh, what we've been working on over the last couple of months. But just to recap, January through March, we are identifying issue areas, assessing gaps, uh, adopting an AIM uh, statement or statements, uh, developing a charter, identifying guest speakers and SMEs, uh, SMEs meaning subject matter experts, establishing communication mediums. Uh, and designing key documents, such as a driver, a driver diagram, change package, and uh, measurement strategy. April through June, we're going to be um, working on um, our uh, AIM statement and executing a facilitation work plan that convenes stakeholders and address issues, uh, identifying how funding can mediate challenges, chronicling best practices and lessons learned, um, progress tracking towards goals and uh, conducting an experience survey. July through September, um, we're getting to uh, the second part of the AIM statement, executing uh, the facilitation of the work plan to convene stakeholders and address issues, continuation from uh, the previous quarter, identifying how funding can mediate challenges, chronicling best practices and lessons learned, uh, progress uh, tracking toward goals, um, feel like there should be one more there, but um, I think we probably have enough to do for July through September. Uh, October through December, uh, we are working on uh, the third part of the AIM statement and executing the facilitation work plan, uh, identifying how funding can mediate challenges as we did in July through September, uh, continue to chronicle best practices and lessons learned, progress toward tracking goals and uh, conducting another experience survey. Next slide, please. So as we've already, and, as we've already, sorry, Ashley, go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. Um, a large part of today is really in developing shared goals together. But before we do that, want to engage your knowledge and wisdom in the larger room. If you could go to the next slide. So we're going to do another Jamboard activity, <clears throat> and we're hoping that you can share one or two relevant initiatives happening in your local county or counties <clears throat> and uplift important key players that should participate in this collaborative. So like the Jamboard last time, we are going to ask you to come off mute and share with us about these relevant initiatives or partners that should be participating in this collaborative. And you'll be able to see the Jamboard populate in real time. So we can go ahead and Okay, so we'd love to have a few people come off of mute and talk to us about the work that is happening. Thank you so much, Ashlyn. And before we dive into the breakout rooms in this activity, I just wanted to provide a little bit of context for the participants. Um, we learned from the first session in San Joaquin and San Estelas and from you know, the collaboratives happening in other counties, that there are multiple micro collaboratives that are also convening. And so because of that, some of that information was shared with us and we were able to connect with those collaboratives. Um, so that way we could learn, you know, what are those collaboratives working on and how can we support and vice versa? Because we wanna make sure that the work that we're doing in this collaborative and the aim statements that we're designing, the project charter that we um, adopt together is not duplicating other efforts more so than it is um, achieving something very unique to what the needs the participants in this specific collaborative are. So if there are any other initiatives or collaboratives that you know about that are happening specifically in San Joaquin and Stanislaus, um, or any specific individuals or um, departments that we should work with, that would be so incredibly helpful for us to just literally just jam out right now. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, hi, this is Tammy Schaff from St. Joseph's Medical Center in Stockton, and I'm just thinking there's a few that I can name right now. One is um, in San Joaquin, the uh, Connected Community Network, um, or CCN, and that is using the Unite Us platform for um, referrals for uh, social care. And then the other is we're implementing the Pathways Community Hub model for community health workers. Um, so that evidence-based um, PCHI model. Um, there's that one. And then um, locally, uh, St. Joseph's has you know, been partnering with our whole person care and, and will continue to do so in this space as well. 
as others. So a few off the top of my head. Thank you. How about a couple more? This is also for the intention we heard in the first meeting that um, you all really wanted to hear from each other also about efforts that are happening, um, work that you're moving that you feel excited about, proud of, you want others to know. So this is for you know information sharing with each other and also for us as the folks who have the honor of facilitating this collaborative to make sure we're not duplicating efforts. It's really a both and. Thank you, Tammy, for renaming them for our, our note takers. It's a lot. I can go ahead and share. This is um, Michelle Mundy from Central Star Behavioral Health. And <clears throat> in Stanislaus County, we provide um, intensive outpatient mental health services for children and families. And <clears throat> we work with other providers as part of the children's system of care. So this is really under the, the mental health plan. Um, and I'm here as one of the the curious watchers in the background, mm -hmm. ready to see when it's time for us to jump into this ECM world, or if that makes sense. Um, but you know, that's a that's a strong partnership in Stanislaus County. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. I doubt you and your curiosity here. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> How about from others, either Andrea or Andrea, Gina, Jody, Casey, Natasha? You can share. Thank you. Well, my name is Andrea Weiss. I'm the WIC Director for Community Medical Center's WIC Program in San Joaquin County. Um, and my parent agency is Community Medical Centers. And we have, don't even know how many, 25 plus um, medical centers, comprehensive medical centers for low-income families throughout San Joaquin and Solano County. And so I know we are doing um, projects around sobering centers and whatnot. Um, and then our CEO actually just put out an email last week um, and talking about the community health worker. And so um, I know that is that position is around. I'm, I'm curious. I'm still wanting to learn more um, because I also heard that um, that like um, FQHCs may not qualify for the community health worker because of um, like the way we're paid in PPS and kind of like positions like health educator positions are kind of tied into there. So I'm curious how our, my parent organization is going to be rolling out like this community health worker position um, within our own organization. Um, and I'm here uh, much like Michelle to kind of see how um, WIC can be incorporated into um, all of this great work that we're doing. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Let's hear from one more. Um, I can share a little bit more about San Joaquin County. Sorry, my cameras, my my internet's a little funky today. So um, just to add on to what um, Tammy was saying, yes, we do here in Whole Person Care, we work closely with St. Joe's, which is great. Um, some of the other work we're doing is um, we are starting a collaboration with SJ Health to try to do some uh, street medicine work. So uh, um, a partnership between public health slash whole person care and SJ Health. Um, so that's one of the other areas that we're collaborating here in our county. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's helpful actually to know that we do have an ECM um, community supports group with Health Plan of San Joaquin that happens like once a month where they review um, and kind of talk about what's happening. It's supposed to be a collaborative. Um, so that also goes on. Excellent. Thank you. Is it Casey or Case? I see your hand raised. Casey, thank you. Uh-huh. Um, 
just a big shout out to all my colleagues here in San Joaquin County who are um, talking about our good work and everybody else um, for all of the work we're doing throughout the state. Um, one thing about what we're doing in our community is we're, we're trying to double our capacity to do um, sheltering combined with navigation services, a whole new model of sheltering that is really using that housing first model. Um, and a big piece of this is being able to leverage everything that everybody's just spoken about within the shelter system. So we, we recognize that housing is a huge portion of the answer, but we need the housing for the health and the health for the housing. And so part of it is how do we how do we support entities that aren't health entities in understanding all of this? And how do we support entities that aren't health entities in um, becoming, for example, CalAIM certified providers or, or leveraging some of these opportunities to sustain services over time? Um, so I think that's a lot of what I'm trying to listen for. Yeah, really appreciate that. Training? I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Training. <laughs> no, I think you put it perfectly. Yeah. Um, and the other piece that they've been asking to us about is, so half of it is around health. I don't think a lot of people know how to do housing navigation. I think mm. we talk about it a lot, but what does that actually mean? And again, I also think that's a training issue. Yeah. Yeah. Really appreciate that. And so I just want to dive in really fast uh, just to, you know, not only uplift and validate what Casey is sharing, but also to, um, you know, continue that conversation in the breakout room, because that's really good information for us to hear in process. Um, Ashlyn is going to facilitate our separation into breakout rooms in just a moment. Um, but that is a, a really great point that we should really just kind of break down more as we literally work to identify, okay, what is the problem? What are the potential solutions? How do we turn that into an aim statement that we want to accomplish by the end of this collaborative? So just in addition to Casey's feedback, um, a few of the other points that just came up are just really, really, really good pieces of information. And so I can't wait to break those down in the, in the breakout room. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Alexis. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to go into breakout rooms. Um, if people want to come off mute or use emojis, give each other love and praise for all the incredible work that is happening. It is, um, yeah, it's very life-giving. Right. Um, oh, we can do better than one emoji. We can do better than that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, okay. Um, great. So next we're going to move into our breakout rooms. Like last time, there's gonna be the option for two different breakout rooms. Um, the first is for people who are um, interested in having contracts. The second is for folks who are already implementing contracts, okay? And what we're gonna do in the breakout rooms is really make progress on defining our aim statements and our charter so that we're really clear on where we're going together over the next year and what success looks like along the way. OK, so you are going to get a prompt to choose either a breakout room one or two. Breakout room one is if you're interested. Breakout two is if you're already contracting. And we'll see you in just a moment. And if you are one of those organizations that um, is not pursuing a contract, but more so holds a relationship with the contracted entity, um, more than likely the contracting room would be more relevant to what your needs are. Um, so feel more than free to join us in that contracting room. Um, but we just want to make sure that the conversations are more tailored um, to uh, the level of engagement that you're currently experiencing uh, with CalAIM. Um, so yeah, see everyone in the breakout rooms and Ash Ashlyn um, uplifted. We're going to be breaking down some problems so that way we can start to uh, think through the solutions and what how we're going to reverse engineer our actions toward those solutions. Okay. Is anyone having any trouble getting into your room? Anybody need help with that? Oh, got called out, got called out. <laughs> that was a funny note to end on. 
Okay, so we're, everyone's back. We're back from uh, uh, small groups. I hope that uh, uh, Ashlyn, your, the group you and Pauline had was as as, uh, as fun and as, as talkative as ours was. Um, that's a good sign, seeing a thumbs up. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's get let's start uh, you know sharing uh, what we discussed in our breakout room reflections. Um, Ashlyn, from your breakout room, do you have someone who has graciously volunteered to provide feedback? We do. Michelle's going to kick us off. Oh, is it me or not? <laughs> okay. Well, I will be happy to. <laughs> so we uh, we talked about the fact that um, a lot of these goals are probably not going to be fully accomplished by 2023 um, and that they will probably go on longer. But what we can do is identify uh, what we want things to look like by the end of 2023. So we had a lot of discussion about, well, what would it look like if we were um, accomplishing sustainability? And then we got into some discussion about how some of the, the goal aim statements really can be paired together. So for example, sustainability and funding you know, are connected, uh, care coordination, data sharing, um, and health and process streamlining is connected. Um, so we looked at our um, objective statements kind of around those premises of you know, where do we wanna be in five years, where do we wanna be in a year? What did that, can I ask, what, what did that uh, vision look like in terms of, you know, three years out, five years out, what, what did success look like for your group? Oh, we had a, a wonderful discussion about what a happy world it would be if everybody, you know, if there was like a, an easily available um, system for you, you know, you need housing, you can just walk, you know, to your local center or you can call and um, you would, there'd be you know, we could see, oh, yeah, this person was connected to this or they've already had this resource that it would just be um, very simple, very easy and very well understood um, by both individuals and the um, provider community. Mm. <laughs> Wonderful. We also Great. talked about the need for resources and um, workforce and making sure that resources are local, that it doesn't help if you have to send somebody six hours away. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Great, great. Other, um, any other reflections from other uh, folks who were in the breakout group? Um, yeah, hi, this is Nai. I just want to um, add to what uh, Michelle has shared. She, she shared the bulk of it, but um, one other piece that I wanted to also share was that we talked about uh, making sure that these services and programs were um, person-centered rather than provider-centered. Um, even the, the statement, the goal statements were really focused towards, you know, organizations meeting goals. And uh, we want to make sure that the individuals are at the center of the design and the implementation of um, the, the coordination, the services, and so on. Great. And, That's a great point. Yeah. And then I'll just want to add, I'll just want to add that the goals were really big and beefy. And what we did was we spent most of our time talking about specifically, you know, how do we break it down so that they're a little more manageable? And how do we get, um, how do we tackle this in, you know, a year is too ambitious, we, we thought, but, you know, three years, five years down the line. Um, and so, mm. again, we have sub goals or objectives under each of our goals. Did you say the goals were? Um, vague and beefy? They were substantial. Um, we didn't, we okay. talked about how um, we needed to make sure that the um, definition or the terminology were aligned because different types of organizations bring their, um, their definition of mm -hmm. what outcomes might entail. And so what we did was we actually spent some time talking about specifically what, what does that look like so that it was a little more tangible or specific? Great. And I'm going to invite also um, um, Casey and Gina and uh, Ashlyn to weigh in as well. Hey, Casey. 
folks are folks are being called out. You got to help her. <laughs> I just I really really appreciate that um, that there was a real emphasis on again it being uh, person centered and also um, wanting um, explicit the focus on equity um, and so also really centering um, sometimes the smaller nonprofits are um, the organizations that are led by BIPOC folks or other marginalized identities um, and making that explicit. So we really are measuring our success on that um, and keeping it um, front and forward for us. Great, and sounds wonderful. I, and if I could add, so we kind of really, based on what Knight was saying about the goals being big, we really tried to break it down into um, some very clear uh, targeted objectives. And I think we didn't get to um, like, okay, in one year we could achieve this and in two years we could achieve this and in five years we could achieve that, but, but it could happen, right? From some of the objectives that were suggested is we could do that. And then I was in a conversation um, uh, with the California State Real TA Equity Project and they kept on calling, talking about smarty goals. And I've talked a lot about smart goals, but I loved the reframing as smart goals that also are inclusive and equity focused. And so I'm gonna be using that phrase from here on out, smarty goals. Um, <laughs> and if anybody else hasn't adopted it yet, just I might be late to the party, but you know, here I am. And so, um, uh, that's kind of what we were hoping for was something that was very, very clear, very measurable, very timely mm -hmm. that we could do it in a year, but it was inclusive and equitable. That's great. I, I, I appreciate uh, you, Casey, and also uh, Michelle and I and Ashton for, for um, reporting back. Um, those are really great points. Um, you know, um, ho hopefully our group could not do you. Uh, no, it's not a competition. I'm joking. Um, so I think we have from our group. Um, am I calling out the wrong person? Was it uh, actually? You know what? I don't. I think that we got cut off before we we singled someone out. So I'm I'm yeah. just gonna have to call. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to call out Casey. Uh, Casey, you, I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fair. <laughs> I can deal with it. It's okay. Um, I'll just cry later. Later, don't worry about it. I'll be fine. <laughs> um, so, our group really kind of went through and looked at some of the objectives that were there. Um, we looked at kind of how they would be structured. What are they trying to accomplish? As well as, do we break them down into like, um, as the other group did, subcategories, and then figuring out how well they pertain to the overall picture. We kind of identified that communication, data sharing, and referrals is one of our biggest kind of challenges that we have as far as a timeline to get that, uh, let's say, resolved, a positive outcome. Um, we didn't really define that just because it was just, it's incumbent in, let's see, where would I want to use? Um, it's its own challenge, just given the fact that it's so big, so many organizations, so many counties, so many different service providers. There's no one clear solution that we can just dictate down and say, this one provider is gonna be the monopoly of it. We all have to deal with it, accept it, like it, love it, leave it. It's just yours, you have to deal with and own it. Um, but we did realize that that would be one of our key points to begin with and try and move forward from there, how we share that data. And then we also looked at like, how do we measure success? So while well, again, we want to say that measurement of success is longer term than just someone got taken care of immediately, it's more the long term outcome objective as well. It's not just a short term, it's over a year, two, three, and then looking at do we have surveys that go out to see how there was sustainability or things were sustained to make sure that the outcome was a positive or desired outcome out of it. And then I don't want to be fair to my team. So let me pick somebody else that can add something to this. 
I can um, volunteer actually, Casey, because um, I, I see that we only have about three minutes oh, left and okay. I want to be super respectful of everyone's time. Um, but I just want to validate that some of the things that were uplifted in group A were also uplifted in group B. So I think that's always validating for us. Um, I really appreciate hearing that feedback about the smart eagles because it lets us know that there might be a real component um, to this collaborative. Um, in addition to everything that Casey uplifted, we talked about um, some specific redundancies that pertain to referrals, authorizations, and billing. Um, we talked about relationship building and how there were specific components of that and advancing um, communication and um, communication between plans providers, advancing communication across counties, um, so on and so forth, would be able to put potential, potentially be one of the measures that we can gauge. Um, we also discussed... Um, let's see here, data sharing, um, and potentially something that we didn't get to was data sharing agreements, but we were able to uplift some issues surrounding data sharing um, and also marrying sustainability and funding and trying to determine how we can reverse engineer uh, one smart goal or, some, or sorry, one aim statement that would be able to marry the two of those. Um, and I just wanna let everyone know because I am getting ready to close this out right now that um, as you probably could tell on the back end. We're chronicling all of this, and we have quite literally about two to three pages of notes that was just collected from both of these groups. And so what we're going to do is take this information, synthesize it, and then work with a QI specialist for us to be able to finalize those aim statements. I know that these were just very high level rough draft statements that we were able to like, you know, throw spaghetti on the wall, see what's stuck and really start to break this down in partnership and in concert with you. But we're gonna take this back to a QI specialist so that way we can really um, use what was received today to break down what those aim statements are going to be and then have everyone adopt what we'll move forward with. Um, all of that being said, I'm actually going to, um, in the interest of time, go ahead, um, Shiva, can we please skip to uh, slide number 25? And we just wanna do a very quick poll um, today because it's really important for us to know what worked best for you today as a part of this session. Um, so can everyone please just participate um, and let us know what was the most helpful about today's session? Um, and you can also let me know if you can see it on your screen right now, um, but was it the aim statement planning, was it the project chartering, the success measures, defining and mediating risk, or collaborating with one another? Um, please let us know because we just want to make sure that we carry that forward. Um, and sorry to my other co-facilitators, can you all see the poll that just launched? All right, so give me one quick second. Sorry about that poll. Hmm. So interesting. Everyone can just drop it in the chat because for some reason I'm not getting an option to launch. So yeah, just let us know like in the chat very quickly, was it the aim statements, project chartering, success measurements, defining and mediating risk, or was it collaborating with one, with one another specifically? There we go. I got some help on the back end. Someone saved me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so we can just hear like what worked best for you today. Um, and while you're working on that poll, if we could go to the next slide. I see we're right here at four o'clock. I just wanna let you guys know on slide, and Shiva, we can go to the next slide. Slide 27, all right. So we are going to synthesize everything that was heard today. We're going to define those aim statements, break those down into some objectives. Um, during next month's session, we're gonna focus on which um, aim statements we'll prioritize to start working on. So they'll already be defined. We'll have our project charter finalized and we'll get back out to everyone. And we're gonna start determining what we're going to work on first so we can determine what SMEs and other um, facilitators we need to have in the room with us to make that happen. Um, we'll also um, share out and adopt the facilitation work plan. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do over quarters two, three, and four for the rest of the year to make sure we all have buy-in for that. And excitingly, we are going to start planning for an in-person Person session that's going to take place in April, and we'll hear back from everyone to determine the best place to meet um, and how we can support y'all in being able to participate in that. Um, as always, we'll send out an email, a follow-up email for uh, registering for the next session. I know we didn't send out the assessment um, that we assume we will be able to send out before today's session, so we'll get that out to you. And we're also still working on the best networking platform for us all to communicate with offline. So we'll make sure that we have all of that over to you via email. And then the very last slide, slide number 28, 
Um, just to give you a recap of where we are um, within our quarter one CPI planning. During the first session, we went over what CPI was. We established our group norms. We defined success. During today's session, we did our aim, aim statement planning and our chartering. Uh, we determined what some progress measures were going to be. And during that next session, we are going to go ahead and determine what to prioritize, adopt the facilitation work plan, and plan for our in-person meeting, as well as identifying some guest speakers and some SMEs. Um, so I'm super excited, super thankful for all of you and what we were able to accomplish today. Now it's just time for us to transition that into an action plan. Um, that being said, any final questions before we break from this amazing meeting? All right. Well, thank you all so incredibly much. Huge shout out to our partners over at the Gashow Group. Um, please remember that you can email us, us at shiva at healthbegins.org for any questions that you have about um, today's session or the future sessions. And we will definitely be in touch with each of you very soon. Thank you all so much. Bye all, have a great week. Shiva, are we um, debriefing?